In the world full of information, it seems like the first one with the news story is the one that gets the stamp. With YouTubers like 1090 Jake being obviously the king of paperwork, now we have Mickey Truth. Murder of a Chicago rapper gunned down in the middle of the day in the Gold Coast. FBG Duck, also known as Carlton Weekly, <laughs> was shot. Yo, this shit seems like a movie right now. Like, get up, get dressed, go to the courthouse. A motherfucking man come up to me and was like, can you come with me for a minute? Said that you got Mickey Truth kicked out. I got I kicked out. The blogger. Who is she? A nobody. <laughs> oh, Tuka, she is trying to build a platform. Today, we're going to be talking about the early beginnings of Mickey Truth. On the platform, YouTube Streets podcast with Zebby and New Age Plug doing the interview. Let's get into it. It's, where are you from, Miss Truth? I am from South Carolina, but by way of Michigan. But I've been in South Carolina since I was like eight. Oh, okay. So you're from the South. Mm -hmm. All right. That's what I'm talking about. I'm from Florida, so... We represent the South. Got something to say? I've been saying that. Okay, shout I've out been saying that. <laughs> yes, yep. I love the South. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Um. So yeah. So you're from. So how was it growing up? Did you have both? Did you have a mother and a father your whole life, or did you mind nah, talking about that? Nah, I ain't had um, none of that. Um, I've openly talked about, it, so it's not an issue. Um, my parents were um, career criminals and um, drug addicts, so I was in and out of foster care, uh, family members home. So yeah, it was rough. I ain't gonna cap it. Um, to be honest, it it just wasn't a home because my parents was in and out of jail so much. It was limited times they were out together. Um, so outside of them actually being married, we really didn't share a home. Um, it was m more that I spent more time with my mom compared to my dad, um, but Mostly, I was raised by other family members um, for the most part. So it was, you know, the family dynamic really was just an odd dynamic because it was kind of not existing only on certain times. So that was key point. If y'all ever hear my intro song is um, made it through the storm trying to conquer the world. That's where that came from. So wow. coming from where I come from, they doubted me, but I came up. I made it through the storm trying to conquer the world. I made it through the storm trying to conquer the world. Coming from where I come from. They doubted me, but I came up. I made it through the storm trying to conquer the world. I made it through the storm trying to conquer the world. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Perfect fit. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. So that's that's what we all came together. Like everybody in the chat too. We all have like this like pain. I don't know if you ever like seen like Zebby's eyes, but a lot of these people's eyes, you can see the pain in it. Um, and I hear it in your voice. That's what I hear. You know what I mean? I hear a lot of pain in your yes, voice. Definitely. Um, but uh, let's let's talk about like. So you did you graduate high school? How was that? How was you know your teen years? So <laughs> it's, it's it's funny. Because I actually dropped out of high school um, twice, but I did finish high school. I did graduate. I um, don't know how, but I did it. Um, I'm actually a teen mom, so I had my daughter when I was 14 years old. Okay. Um, so on top of that, I did time in DJJ. I'm not sure if everybody call it DJJ, but it's like juvenile um, detention. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I was, I was, I was rough around the edges for sure. Okay. <laughs> It took me to, you know, growing up, a lot of people say, oh, she'll end up just like her mom and dad. And, you know, you don't really understand it when you're young. So I kind of was giving them their satisfaction by going down the road I was going down. You know, when I had my daughter, they was like, oh, she's going to have a thousand kids or, you know, she's not going to do this. And I kind of fed into it. When I was about 16, almost 17, that's when I I got out of DJJ and I realized, yo, I am like literally becoming my parents, you know. My daughter had to live with someone else while I'm in DJJ, you know. It, it's just not what it is. So at that moment, I said, you know what, I'm just about to do what I got to do by any means to be better 
And I went back to high school. Like I said, my whole ninth grade, I missed, right? Because I dropped out. I was in school. So I had to go to regular classes. I had to go to summer school. I had to do online classes just to graduate on time. So, yeah, I just had to make it, make a decision to do better. And that's when I did it. Well, that's huge. I mean, you did you did double what you had to do to okay. get it right. Yes, by any means. That's why I say don't give up. That's always what I preach on my um, channel is like at the end of the day, we all come from somewhere. But if you let other people's opinions or views or even statistics get you to the point where you becoming one, then that's not their problem, it's your problem. Because if I can make it through it um, by just putting my mind to it, anybody can. Absolutely, I can relate to that a lot. I was always the one everybody counted out. Mm -hmm. Nobody really wanted to party with no more because everybody thought mm -hmm. I was going to die. and right. Everybody counted me out. Nobody thought I'd be here today, so I can relate to that. Right. Okay. Yep. So after that, you know, you said you had, so you have one daughter or you have multiple kids? No, I have one daughter that's um, 20. Uh, well, she's not 20 yet. She's about to be 20. And then I have a uh, god daughters that's like my daughter. Um, that's what, about to be five. So I think Zebby can relate to that too. He has a, you know, he has a, I think a teenager and I have my, my kids has turned 10, but I had them very young. And I, I think it's awesome when we have kids young right so we can do so much stuff with them and we're gonna okay. go grow old with them you know you know it might get sad they might die before us because we're both gonna be old but at the end of the day we spend a whole life with them you know it's not something you know temporary god willing okay because i definitely grew up with mine okay Cause, and it was one of those things the stigma and if y'all ever catch me on clubhouse when they talk about these type of topics i get real passionate about it because the stigma is if you have a child young, you know, your family or your grandmother or whoever raises your child. No, I actually raised mine from start to finish. So um, it definitely everybody doesn't fit in that category. So so, yeah, so sure. it's, we'll get in the clubhouse, too, because it's very toxic over there. And we'll talk about that um, <laughs> right. but before before that. Was it what were you on first? So, so the social media aspect, was it MySpace and then Facebook, like all of us or so what, to be honest, I've been on my space but not on like a like on what i'm on now you know just as a just a, a viewer i've been on facebook so i've been on instagram i mean i was doing things but not as mickey truth i was just doing it as always a leader which was which is my brand um outside of mickey truth um but it wasn't on nothing like this like i i got multiple businesses including like um custom custom design t-shirts custom designs everything i party plan um i got a cleaning business so i mean i got a lot of other businesses that i was doing but i wasn't really um strong on the social media presence so like all those pages are small when i decided to do mickey truth um i actually was on youtube as just mickey right that was the name i was in comments just mickey that was the name mickey um but when take all oh do, do you want to get into that how i actually started on youtube yeah we can start because we, we can uh was it clubhouse first though no no clubhouse oh. Like oh okay see i thought clubhouse okay so youtube was first all right yeah start with the the takeoff stuff go ahead okay so um when takeoff was murdered i actually was on that very first live that academics did on mm -hmm. youtube mm -hmm. i was very interested because I'm from South Carolina, right? You know, the Migos is on Georgia, Atlanta, or whatnot. Right. And before they actually went mainstream, I went to see them when they came up here. So I felt like I kind of grew with the group. You know what I'm saying? I was in my, what, early 20s when they actually, or maybe, I can't even remember, but it was like I was younger. So I kind of felt a little connection to it because I was like, oh man. And then to see like, you know, all the footage that came out, like I literally woke up at three something that morning and was on Twitter when all the footage was out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it kind of was like surreal. So when I got on Academics Live, I'm like, yo, this is crazy. So I kind of just got an interest in the case. Um, so I created uh instagram so that's why i started out first instagram i had an instagram page where i was just looking into the case posting stuff on instagram i had only five followers okay so um shout out to crisco for um that's a youtuber his um channel is say no to Skull. 
he actually found me by a hashtag on Instagram. And he was looking into finding information about the take all case and he came across my page and he hit me up and he was like, yo, you really out here doing your thing. Like, I need you to pull up on my um, channel. And I had never heard of him before and I almost didn't, you know, reply. But I looked at his page and I said, okay, that's a pretty nice size platform. So I ended up going on his show November 3rd and a couple of key points about for those who don't know because at this point no one knew who i was so right um the identity of the the male victim right um the assistant i'm the one who provided that to poet flacco but it was before i became the truth um i'm the one who wrote who was holding the chucky doll like who he was that he was bushwood bill's son um right. so I was the one who made the connection with Lil Kim, Lil Kim fathers who um, rap a lot. Meaning, if y'all ever see the picture of um, Jay Prince and a bunch of guys standing around, and you see a picture that says Lil Kim Dad in big red letters, that's my picture because I put those letters on there. So, like, I was the one that was in the mix with that, but no one knew me. You get what I'm saying? So, I right. went on his channel. We, you know, I said everything I just said. And his viewers, like, just started really rocking with me. And one of them was like, hey, I really think you should do YouTube because your information is being put out anyway. You should grow a YouTube channel. Now, I've tried YouTube before. They all flop. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I don't know. So I created my Mickey Truth 2022 page November 1st, but I never posted until, like, November 8th because it took me a week to decide to even post. So that's how I started on YouTube.